Okay. During this process, I'm going to use a speed bleeder bag and hose kit. You can see this one is definitely well traveled. I've had it back here for a couple of years. We sell them on the site. It really makes bleeding the brakes on your bike a no mess process. It's a no brainer of a purchase. Take care of it. You'll be able to use it during this service as well as maintenance on the motorcycle. We poured the fluid in there and I've kind of let it gravity down just a little bit. A couple of different things you can do. You could actually put a cable tie holding the brake lever open partially, right? And that really encourages the fluid to flow down into the calipers because that's what it's all about right now is just getting the fluid to start moving. Once we get the fluid to start moving, because remember this whole system is dry, the process is gonna happen really, really quickly, but it's all about that initial flow of fluid. We'll come down here and I'm gonna put the speed, speed bleeder hose, the bag hose on this bleeder screw. Okay, and what I wanna do here is, see that? We've just got it gravity feeding now. Bike sat for a couple minutes and you can see that the fluid is in motion now down through that caliper. So we've got ourselves a nice little start and you can see that there is clearly a tremendous amount of air in the system. I don't know if the bubbles will pick up or not on camera. And you can actually see the fluid level begin to drop as we go through this process. So I'm gonna let that happen for a couple minutes. I'll go over to the other side, do the same thing, and then we'll come up to the master cylinder and do a little there as well. Okay, we're done on the right side. I've refilled the master cylinder reservoir and I'll come over here to the other caliper. We're just gonna do the same thing and see if we can get some immediate fluid flow here. Kind of give that a second. You can see there the fluid comes. Gravity is your friend here. Should get a little less air than we saw on the other side. And we'll let that go for a couple minutes. You know, I let it go through about half of the reservoir on the other side. And once I got it to go through half of the reservoir, the bubbles had slowed considerably. I tightened the screw and then removed the hose. Master cylinder, and this is a critical step here within this process, right? You definitely want to make sure the master is bled thoroughly. So, let's go ahead and get that hose over the bleeder screw nipple. And let's see if we get any flow via gravity. May or may not. push the lever in about halfway and see if that'll allow some to start moving through there. Okay, really no fluid yet. So what we're gonna do is tighten the screw, loosen the lever. I'm gonna open the screw, depress the lever, close the screw, release the lever. Open the screw, depress, tighten, release. I'm going to repeat this a few times. Until the bubbles are either eliminated or dramatically reduced. And we are definitely starting to get a lever now. Pump it about three times, hold it, and tighten it back down. Okay, now we're ready to go down to the calipers, All right, and bleed those through. When you're done, every bike's a little different, especially the stock master. When you're done, you should have a very firm brake lever, okay? 
see now. Yeah, we're definitely beginning to get a lever. I'm going to pump it a couple times, hold it, open the screw, close it. Repeat this process all the while I'm going to maintain a good brake fluid level. Okay. I'm going to go over to the other side now and I think we're going to find there is a fair amount of air in the left side. The lever has improved pretty much each time. Definitely much firmer now. Okay, we're looking pretty good down at the calipers. I'm going to top the fluid off and we're going to go back up to our master and bleed that again. Okay, go ahead and pump it up. Hold it. Hold it. Okay, master looks really good. Lever is very firm now. And I'm going to do this caliper one more time. I just feel like the lever could be just a little bit better, right? Fluid level is still good, so need to top that off and yeah that's what I was looking for right there One more time. Okay, we've got a really good clean fluid flow here. At the master. Lever is good and firm. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick. While I'm doing the rear brake line, something that I like to do, and I typically what I'll do with my race bikes when I'm heading to the track, if I have serviced the brake fluid, is I will put a cable tie. Go ahead and top this off now. Never overfill your brake fluid, that is key. Get it right to that upper mark and stop, okay? The fluid's going to expand when it's hot, and if it doesn't have anywhere to go, you can end up with brake drag, okay? So very important that you do not overfill it. Now, I'll take two cable ties.
And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to literally hold that lever on like so. And we'll let gravity be our friend. And if there's any bubbles that are in the bottom of the system, they'll just kind of work their way up while we're sitting here on the work table. I'm going to clean up a bit. We'll come back and start working on the rear line. Just like they did on the front, Spiegler has these fittings marked. Make sure I have an abundance of adhesive there. If there is, we're going to get it cleaned off. Now let's begin mounting this and see what it's going to look like for us. Okay, clearly the fitting here on the back um, is going to need to be rotated. Alright, so I want to go over to the bench. I'm going to rotate that. I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. Just like we did on the other one, get it in the vise like so. smooth motion like that. Save the tools in case we need to use them again. And I would say that's definitely much more appropriate. Kind of let it hang there, and let's grab our banjos and our crush washers. Get this all ready to go. Start up here at the master. Now we've got banjo washer and another washer. Essentially what you want to do is you want to have a washer on either side of your fitting. Finger tight for now. It's pretty obvious at this point the rear line is really the easiest of the two. It's pretty low hanging fruit. Okay. We're going to use each of the holdouts. You can see the routing looks spot on. And let's get our 14 millimeter wrench and torque our two banjos. Next up, we will need to clean out the brake reservoir. Just like we did in the front, fill the fluid and begin the bleeding process. Got a little fluid in the reservoir now. Grab a wrench, our handy speed bleeder bag and hose kit. Get that over the bleeder screw like so. And, yeah, just kind of get a little gravity bleeding going, just like we did on the front. Kind of let it sit like that for a couple of minutes until you get some fluid flow. Okay, I let it sit for a couple minutes. We really didn't have a lot of movement with the fluid. Not a big deal. It's a very simple system, very short here. So what I'm going to do is close the screw, 
open it, depress the brake pedal, close the screw, release the pedal. I'm going to repeat this process until we have fluid flow. Be sure to keep an eye on the brake fluid in the reservoir so that you don't run it dry because that'll put you right back at square one. And there we go. Fluid is on the move. Like I said, much simpler than the front. Okay, get a little top off here. Just starting to get a pedal now. And there we go. Nice solid brake pedal. I'm going to pump it up, hold it down, and we'll repeat that process a couple times. Once again, keep your eye on your fluid. You do not want to run out. And if you do all this just right, Okay, front and rear, you should have just enough fluid in that bottle, right, to get you through. Okay, now I want to make sure the fluid level is not over full. Same concept as in the front. Okay, you want to have it around the upper mark. And that should bring it right to where I wanted it. Pedal feels great. Go ahead and pull this off. 